So ek het die voorrecht om een kort boodskapje te deel. Um, Pastoor het gesê, baie mense het gesê, ek moet kort prik, maar ek prik, al, prik altyd kort. So, um, <laughs> as het moeilijk is, ek gaan net een bykie, die, die, die bykie woord deel. En um, ek gaan my best probeer om in die hemelse taal te praat en te prik, maar verskoon my, ek gaan in die heilige taal die bybel lees. So, um, as reg, jylle kan in die Afrikaanse bybel leer, lees, ek gaan in die Engels lees, blaai saam met my asjeblief na handelinge 8 toe. Handelinge 8. Nou, ek het al reeds hier die boodskap een paar keer in verskillende plekke, en nie, nie die boodskap van hier die hoofstuk afgepreek. Uh, ek, ek beloof vir die wat in die ander meetings was, ek ken ander skrifte in die bybel, um, maar ek geloof redag, daar is een paar beginsels wat ek wil, wat ek geloof die heren sê, ek moet deel van handelinge 8. En um, ja, ons begin in um, vers so daar uh, da was uh, persecution en die, die, die geloviges het begin skatter oorals en in uh, vers 5 Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them and the multitude with one accord heeding the things spoken by Philip hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in that city please say with me there was great joy in the city but there was a certain man called simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of samaria claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time but when they believed philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of god in the name of jesus christ both men and women were baptized then simon himself was also believed and he was baptized he continued with philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done now when the apostles who were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent peter and john to them who when they had come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy spirit for as yet they had fallen upon none of them they had only been baptized in the name of the lord jesus then they laid hands on them and received the holy spirit and when simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles hands the holy spirit was given he offered them money saying give me this power also that anyone on whom i may lay my hands may receive the holy spirit but peter said to him your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of god could be purchased with money you neither have part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of god repent therefore of this your wickedness and pray that God, if perhaps he, the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. And uh, Simon and uh, uh, Simon then repents. So, on seen Philip het uh, na, na Samaria toe gegaan en uh, herleving en uit, uit, uitgebreek, herleving, nee? revival, het uitgebreek en daar was wonenwerke en healings en deliverances en al die goed wat gebeur het en die bybel sê daar was great joy in the city en toe die apostels in Jerusalem gehoor dat wat aangaan in Samaria, toe die, die twee apostels, uh, Peter en John um, was gestuur om daar te gaan en hulle het begin handen oplee op die mens om die heilige geest te ontvang en die skrif sê daar so uh, in vers 16 for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Nou wat ek wil hier net gauw uitleg, daar was a herleving, daar was miracles, signs and wonders, healings, deliverances, there was great joy in the city. Daar was baie geestelike goed wat aangegaan het. Maar daar was niks in die mense nie. God het beweeg, maar God was nie in die mense nie. They were getting saved. Please understand me. Let's not get too theological. Christ was in them. But what I'm saying is, like Dr. Jonathan David says, that which is happening on the outside must then be deposited on the inside of people. And that by a kid, and in these last days, you can the last day, you can at the end of the age, you can at the end of the age, you can at the end of the age, 
Die Bijbel sê daar gaan baie dinge gebeur and deception is going to be one of the, the most dangerous things for the church. False apostles, false teachers, false doctrines, false miracles. And actually, the, the spirit of discernment, the gift of discerning of spirits is going to be one of the most important gifts in this end times. To be able to discern where, where God is. Pastor Cornelius has spoken a series where om om in die geest te kan sien. Dit gaan so belangrik om akkuraat in die geest te kan sien en die laaste dag om te weet wat is die waarheid. Omdat dan gaan baie geestelike dinge begin begrepeer. If you know Dr. John and David's teaching on Revelations 12, in the end times, as we rise in the spirit, the enemy is going to manifest more and more in the natural. And he's not just going to manifest demonically, he's going to manifest as an angel of light. He's going to send false prophets, false teachers, and they are already here, preaching in people's ears. And as ons nie die, 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 die gave van onderscheiding het nie, gaan ons nie weet wat aangaan nie, wat is die waarheid. The Bible says that deception becomes so great that it may even deceive the elect, die beste van die beste. So ons moet wakker wees in die geest om te, gaan, te kan sien, wat is die waarheid. Maar hier sien ons een situasie waar daar baie geestelike dinge gebeur het. And in a revival you will see many spiritual manifestations. Maar jy moet weet wat is God en wat is nie God nie. En in this situation, ons sien, daar was baie geestelike dinge wat in die atmosfeer gegaan het, and healing is a physical gift, but it does not cause you to repent. Dit is a fysische uh, manifestatie van Gods het kracht, maar die doel van geneesing is om te genees, en nie om redding te bring nie. Conviction of the Holy Spirit brings repentance and salvation. Are you with me? Maar dit wat die herleving wat plaasvind, of die geestelike dinge van God, wat plaasvind in die atmosfeer, moet gedeponeer wees in ons geeste, in ons levens. Die verandering wat plaasvind, moet plaasvind binnen in ons. This, rare, this that's real revival, is when lives change. When the life of God, sorry, I mustn't apologize, but I'm going to apologize again anyway. Uh, ek moet oorslaan in Engels nou en dan, omdat uh, is lang tyd van <laughs> wanneer ek laas in, in Suid-Afrika was. But the life of God that is deposited inside of us must be diffused through us. The Bible says the knowledge of Christ will be diffused like a fragrance through our lives. Maar dis gees, dis nie net behavioral patterns nie, dis nie net goeie christene nie, it's the life of God that has been deposited inside of us. The person of Jesus Christ. Wanneer ons een gebroke lewe uh, uh, leef, wanneer ons een oorgegewe lewe leef, wat ons oorgegewe het aan die Heilige Geest, aan Jesus Christus, aan die Vader, wanneer ons die huis van God is, die gebroke wessel, gee kans dat die Heilige Geest kan dier ons vloei na ander mense toe. There's no greater privilege than when you're standing next to a non-believer and they so, feel so uncomfortable in your presence. They feel so convicted of their sin and you haven't said a thing. I don't know if you have so experienced it, but the first time when I was in love as an unbeliever in the church, the last week of my reading, I felt so much fail. I was so aware of my sin and the teenwoordigheid of the Lord. I was so convicted by the Holy Spirit. And it was not iemand met my, met, met my gepraat het nie. Dit was nie die mooie lichte nie. Dit was nie die stoele nie. Dit was nie eens die mooie mense nie. Ek het gedink allemaal was hy licht tot ek het hulle hier geken het. <laughs> Toe het ek besef hulle is in genade gered. <laughs> Groot genade. Maar dit was die teenwoordigheid van God wat my tot redding gebring het. I'll give you an awesome testimony. I was in Uganda once and um, 
In the evenings, they, they, they have these braais. They lay these braais on your pad. But it's fish. So, so, many, this, this grunt is fish. Um, here, uh, tilapias. Oof, panina river. Magnifique, it's lekker. And I would go in the evenings and I would buy one of these fish. And I remember I went to one of the brides and I stood there waiting for my fish. And here, a Muslim man came to come stand with me, stand langs me. And I could not from him and say, hello. And I kicked myself, I'm Muslim, I'm Muslim. Yeah. I'm Muslim, I'm Muslim. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know you're a Muslim, Mike. I can see you're a Muslim, you're wearing your cap. And, and I thought, how come it is so reageer and manifesteer? I could not allow to say, I could not have a great on my heart or nothing. Nie. Toe het ek besef, toe ek hallou gesê het, het iemand anders hallou gesê. Is jy saam met my? If you think of the great men of God, Catherine, great men and women of God, Catherine Kuhlman, she would step into an elevator and, when, and go up the stairs, ding, and when it comes up, and when the elevator opens, ding, allemaal is op die grond, balwe haar, en sê, stap uit. On a man, I loop, I loop in, a, in, a, in a dorp in, in for a mile, a mile rond, fall amal on the, 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 the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And they begin repenting. He's not even speaking to them. It's just because he is there. It's not just because he is there, because he is carrying the presence of God. On set a mooi liki gesang. What was that? What was that? That, that, that word, um, Adonai, El Shaddai, God living in me. This is what I'm talking about. The reality of the life of God that is, needs to be made manifest. Not first of all through me, but in me. Now there are three situations that I will not uitleg. Mensen in die kerk, and I praat nie met niemand nie, ek praat hierboe. If it is you, God bless you. May your lives change from it. The eerste person is somebody who sits in the service sees everybody enjoying God, experiencing God, and bidding to say, ek ervaar God is hier so, en jy soos waar, ek ervaar niks nie, amal heil, en bid en tale, en ervaar die, die, die teenwoordigheid van God, en jy ervaar niks nie, het was niks verkeerd met jou nie, maar het is een challenge, it is a challenge om nie net rond te kyk wat gebeur in die atmosfeer, maar verstaan die God wat buiten manifesteer, is ook die in wat binnen ons woon. Blij saam met my gauw gauw na Genesis 7 vers 11. Dis ook om ek na die Engels gebruik het, omdat ek, ek verstaan nie die groot woorde in, 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 in die hemelse taal nie, so ek, 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 ek weet nie of het die selle ding sê as ek wil nou sê nie. So, it's also a very young tale as Engels. So. But it's still the Himmels tale. I say always for the people, as Afrikaans the Himmels tale is, I can have a great opportunity. Then I can't understand what's going on in the Himmel. Genesis 7, 11. In the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on the day all the fountains of the great deep, everyone say all the fountains of the great deep, Wat sê die Afrikaans daar so? Die wat? Die fonteine van die groot watervloed. Is dit die ou vertaling? Ok, ja. Ek verstaan dit nie so mooi nie. So, the fountains of the great deep. Ok. The fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Everyone say windows of heaven. Fountains of great deep. Windows of heaven. Now the Old Testament is very good in that it a prophetic print from from Christian beginnings can outlook, okay? And this is this is a, a, one of those examples, and it gives us a prophetic picture of God's presence. We have God's omnipresence. God's omnipresence means God is everywhere at the same time, right? Then we have God's manifested presence which is like the windows of heaven. That is what we commonly uh, understand when we are in a worship and we say, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven. And we feel God's presence from the outside. 
manifest from the outside, falling upon us like rain. Is that not so? Maar God is al reeds hier so. Misschien ervaar jy nie God nie. Jy voel niks, jy hoor niks. Maar dit, bedoel, dit beteken nie God is nie hier nie. He is always there. I am with you always. God lives inside of you, whether you experience him or not. Die probleem is, ons focus is nie op God nie. Dis nie dat God nie daar is nie. Ons sien nie God, omdat ons nie op hom focus nie. Maar in tyde, tyde, tyde van aan bidding, begin ons meer intens op God focus. En dan God openbaar homself aan ons, wat hy al reeds hier is. Hy was altyd daar, maar hy sê, hallo, nou sien jy my bykie beter, omdat jy, dra, jy kom nader aan my. Are you with me? That is why worship lifestyle is so important. Because the closer we draw to him, the more he reveals in himself that we see him all the time. That everywhere we go, we see him. Are you with me? My, the, 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 God's manifested presence that opens like the windows of heaven. Maar as a problem, baie tye en baie, baie keer in die moderne kerk vandag, is dat al that it's all we focus on is the external manifested presence of God. So then when it's not there, we feel lost, we feel hopeless, we feel depressed, we feel negative because we don't experience God. Secondly, we need all these external things to provide this, this atmosphere for the manifested presence. We need a wonderful worship band. We need an electrical guitar. We need words on the projector. We need smoke machines. We need lights to make us make the atmosphere right so I can experience the external atmosphere. Nee, 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 nee. This not nie for our anbidding van our kom nie. I must be able to experience God no matter the external atmosphere. Then the second one is we have the fountains of the great deep were broken up. That is called the indwelling presence of God. That is God that lives inside of me permanently. I can see temple van die heilige geest. God lives inside of me. And that is what I need to begin to acknowledge are you with me? That life of God needs to break open. Everyone say break open. Because there's a lot of us who are, a lot of people who may be born again, but inside they are dry. They are dying of thirst, spiritual thirst. They are not living life to the fullness. They're not drinking from the living waters. They are in a, they feel like they're on a desert, but they've got the fountain of living waters living inside of them. And that dam must break open. Maar die probleem is ons, uh, uh, the wells, so, wat is Afrikaans for well? Die water gaat. Is a, a fontein. A pit. Ok, die ding. Water gaat, kan ek het water gaat noem? O, is dit is een kroeg, water gaat. <laughs> That, must, that needs to be broken open. Are you with me? But the problem is, many times our wells are stopped with all sorts of rubbish in our lives. We see here with Simon, when he saw the, wanneer hy gesien het, die apostels kom en hulle leer aan die, en hulle mense ontvang die heilige geest, hy het geld gehoor van gesê, gee my daar halwe. En listen to Peter's response, where he, 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 he rebukes Simon, he says, um, where am I now? I'm in Genesis 7. No, no, no. In handeling 8. Excuse um, Handeling 8. Uh, verse. So he begins to rebuke him. And verse 22 he says, Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray that God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. Everyone say poisoned by bitterness. And bound by iniquity. Maar, luister, Simon is gered. Simon believed and he himself was also baptized. He's believing, he's saved, and he's baptized. Yet he is poisoned by bitterness and bound still by iniquity. Binnenkant. Nie in sy geest nie, maar in sy seel. 
Das Gute ist in his unrenewed soul, his unrenewed mind, that are binding him, that are poisoning him, and they will poison the waters. When he begins to share about anything, die gif kan uitkom enige tyd. So we need to remove everything that can poison or bind us or, or, or contaminate the living water inside of us or the things that are blocking that well from breaking open, whether it be fear, intimidation, compromise, whatever it may be, we need to remove those rocks. Because the enemy, I mean, if you look in Genesis where Jacob, is it Jacob? Uh, or Abraham? Abraham, Isaac. Abraham en Lot, ek denk was hulle, uh, ek denk was hulle, ek staan in die correctie, hy het gate gegrauw, uh, pitte gegrauw, fonteine gegrauw, die ding, en, um, en uh, Lotse mense, ek denk, het gekom, en hulle weer verstop. The enemy will come and block those fountains to prevent you from receiving the life of God. He cannot stop God. But we allow the life of God to stop flowing when we fill our holes with all this rubbish. And we have to remove it that the life of God may be manifest. Are you with me? The revival must break out on the inside. God's presence must break out on the inside. Then I can enjoy the manifested presence. I can enjoy the indwelling presence. I can see God everywhere. Ten midde van omstandighed, in the lion's den, wherever I am, I can experience God, even if I cannot feel God. But I'm so convinced of the truth because the Holy Spirit testifies within my spirit. And I can hear that testimony. I can experience that testimony on the inside. And even when I don't, I still stand on the truth that I know that He is there. And then I can be so sure of my salvation. I can be so sure of God's faithfulness. I can be so sure of God's provision. Whatever it may be, that the word is so established in my life and confirmed in my life because of God's presence living inside of me. This but it's so important as church people Because when new members come in here, you don't even have to put up your hands. But how many of you continue to come to our Father's home because you experience love, because you experience family, because you experience genuine fellowship of Christ in your midst? I've heard many of you testify to me personally. That's why you stayed. Because of the love you experienced. And that's what Jesus says in John 13, 36. He, uh, 34, sorry, he says, A new commandments I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That quality of relating is what we seek. The essence of what we seek. Now, I've, 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 I've had a real learning school when it comes to church. Ek was so geestelik en glad nie, prakties nie. So ek verstaan dat die kerk een plek, en ek verstaan nou, dat die kerk een plek van verhouding is, wat ons kan by mekaar kom en met mekaar praat en alles, verseker. Jylle verstaan, ek sê, dit is reg, nee? Maar asseblief, it's not a social club. There must be a quality of relating when we come together. One of the problems modern day church has, on said Sunday and on said Miskin Wednesday cell, but we don't connect with one another during the week. We can connect with all our worldly buddies during the week, but we don't necessarily have this fellowship all the time. That is the place for socializing. I've been guilty of this too. I come to church and I speak to my my African brothers in the English service about soccer and football and all sorts of things. Manchester United, Liverpool, yellow is amper so see cheetahs in Blobola and Dyden. Net met een bal. Ok? Maar wanneer ons bij mekaar kom, there must be a quality of relating, a quality of speech, because we only have this opportunity when we are all gathered together in the name of Jesus. Because when we gather together in the name of Jesus, daar is ek in die middel, nie ek nie die Heere. There's very few opportunities when we are gathered in such a way where God is present in such a way in our midst. 
And we need to use that opportunity. 1 John 1 verse 1 to 3. That which we have seen, everyone say seen. That which we have heard, that which we've experienced with our own hands, what I physically experienced, that, I de- that we declare to you. We declare these things to you that your fellowship may be with us, but our fellowship is truly with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. What is he saying there? Uh, sorry, can I just have two quickly, two people quickly, uh, Nico and Fanzal, quickly. Uh, one more. Marius, mag ek jou vraag. Ek sien nie die mooie mense daar so. Sjylle kan net hier kom. Ek sal Marius laat die heilige een wees. As jy kan net daar staan, Marius, en dan jylle twee daar kant. <laughs> jy was nie daar kant nie, jy was daar kant. <laughs> so, what is he saying? He's saying that which I, which I, in my, in my relationship with God, in my relationship with God, that which I've, ex- which I've heard from God, that which I've, seen in my relationship with God and what I've tangibly experienced in my relationship with God. That I share with you so that you may have fellowship with me, but truly I'm bringing you into fellowship with the fellowship that I have with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you may also have this fellowship. Paul says something very interesting. He says, he says, um, but my God shall supply all your needs in Jesus Christ. If you, you know that scripture? I can eat Afrikaans nie, maar, but my God will supply all your needs. Maar jou God is my God. What is he trying to say? My God will supply all your needs. I want you to know how my God provides for me. So I'm bringing you into fellowship. The way I share with God, testify about God's provision in my life, and the way I speak to you, I'm bringing you into that same provision that I have with my God, so that your God provides all your needs. But we can only have this type of fellowship if there's a quality of relating amongst us. That we are sharing the life of God. It's not just spiritual, who do talk holy, holy, I need to speak in scriptures. But when we are together, there must be more of that. That is a priority. Are you with me? I always, thank you gentlemen. I always struggled, and I'm going to finish with this. I always struggled with this. I, I still struggle a little bit with small talk. To I can, Johannesburg was by, by Manasala. Na ek bedien het in die sondagdienst, kom die vrouwens en een paar van die ouwe vrouwens, hulle praat met my en hulle praat oor die loinkies en die weer en um, piek en pie en ek wil net weet wat gaan aan met, wat, wat sê die heren in jou leven? <laughs> jou hond is lelik, maar ek, ek is nie ingeset, ek wou sê mooi, maar hulle is nie mooi nie. <laughs> Ek het baie gesikkel, omdat ek, ek, het, ek het die perspektief gehad, ek het net hierdie een dag, om, om, om soveel as moendlik van Christus in jou te sien vandag. So verskoon my as ek nie wil oor jou hond praat nie. Maar ek het geleer, jy kan nie altyd so dinge doen nie, jy moet kan relate met mense, en patie keer moet jy oor honde praat, en karre, en gitaar, en wat ook al. Maar wat ek wil sê is, en ek sê nie, ons kan nie so socialize nie, maar wat ek sê is, verstaan die belangrikheid as wat ons by mekaar kom, and the quality of relating, because people are going to be, people that come here are going to be baptized into the culture, and they are going to do what you do, like children. They are going to learn your manners, your habits. Are you with me? But if we're sharing the life of God that has been deposited in us, it's a very quick step for life-changing breakthrough for them. Because they immediately baptize into a culture where it's God is in our midst. God is being deposited in us. The life of God is being shared. Hallelujah. Kom ons bid. Vader God, ons dankie vir jy genade. Dankie, jy is groot, Heere. Father, you are such a good God. 
And it's such a privilege to be your church, to be your house, to be your temple, a dwelling place where you want to come and live. Father, forgive us for our sins, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to identify and to remove all the obstacles that are blocking those fountains from breaking forth in our lives. Help us to become more aware of your presence in us and around us. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to share the life of God amongst one another. And Father, I pray that you will help us. Help us to cultivate the atmosphere inside of our spirits for you to come and move. In Jesus' name. Amen. Excuse me. Last thing I have said to you, this is the end, but geestelike dinge, en hulle verstaan nie, hulle ervaar nie. Ander ding is, jy is vol van die gaves, jy is vol van geestelike dinge, maar nog steeds binnen is daar niks wat gebeur nie. That's another challenge, is not to focus on the gifts, not to focus on all these things that are happening inside, but make sure the life of God is coming up. Amen? Amen.